Coming up, a Varasta woman is shot during a fight with another woman. And four Varasta residents are arrested on cocaine and weapons charges. We'll have these stories and more. Your News Varasta starts now. News about Asa. I'm Tamara Conyers. And I'm Chris Carter. This morning, shortly before 1 o'clock, a woman was found with a gunshot wound to her wrist, apparently due to a fight between her and another woman. Officers arrived and found the victim, Jessica Godfrey, with a single gunshot wound to her left wrist. According to Godfrey and other witnesses, she was involved in an altercation with Shanavier Shen Walker. Police say at some point during the fight, Walker pulled out a handgun and fired one shot, striking Godfrey in the left wrist. Walker was taken to the Lowndes County Jail, where she is being held pending arrest warrants, being signed for an aggravated assault and possession of a firearm during the commission of a crime. Godfrey was taken to the South Georgia Medical Center emergency room, where she was treated and released. A domestic dispute last week has led to the arrest of four people on cocaine and marijuana charges. At approximately 2.30 a.m. last Wednesday morning, Lowndes County Sheriff deputies stopped four people in a vehicle in the 2400 block of Madison Highway while responding to a complaint of an ongoing domestic dispute. During the traffic stop, a deputy said he noticed the smell of burnt marijuana coming from the car. Reports say Philip Crumpton, the driver, gave the deputy permission to search the car. That search resulted in the discovery of numerous small plastic baggies, approximately six grams of cocaine that was in different locations in the car. Digital scales, a small quantity of marijuana, and a 20 caliber handgun were also confiscated. Crumpton and his three passengers were then, taken to, were then arrested and taken to the Lowndes County Jail. Almost a dozen fire trucks responded to a house fire Sunday afternoon that destroyed a house on Smith Street. The home, owned by Joseph Wayne Banker, was engulfed in flames around 4 p.m. He told fire investigators he stepped out to get some groceries and his niece called to warn him of what happened. A woman who witnessed the blaze called for help when she saw it. Firefighters struggled heavily against the blaze as people gathered to watch across the street at Thomas Chapel Missionary. The church offered Baker help an ambulance and the Lowndes County Sheriff's Office responded to the fire, but officials report no one was hurt. But Austin resident Katrina Mason has been charged with aggravated assault for hitting her husband with a 2x4 board last Wednesday afternoon. Police responded to a report of a domestic dispute on the 100th block of Cherokee Street. Reports say the husband had visible marks but did not sustain any significant injuries. 50-year-old Mason was charged and taken to the Lowndes County Jail. Oil prices are on a roller coaster, and it's difficult to predict if they're going to go up or down. After the price of oil fell nearly 60% since June, it bounced back 19% since late January and is now closing near $53. Oil has fallen or risen 3% or more on 14 of 26 trading days so far this year. In Valdosta, the lowest gas price listed last Friday was $2.06 a gallon. Stocks overall climbed Friday as a rebound in oil prices pushed energy stocks higher. A dozen or more environmental activists in the Valdosta community marched at Valdosta State University's campus last Thursday to demand the university and its foundation divest from fossil fuels. The group's Wiregrass Activists for Clean Energy and Students Against Violating the Environment organized the event. They oppose several natural gas projects, such as the proposed Sabal Tail Pipeline that is slated to run through Lowndes County. Protesters carried a coffin with them that represented the loss of people being secure in their homes without companies taking their land. The Lowndes County Commission and the Valdosta City Council already have both opposed the pipeline. Lowndes County's recent two-day planning meeting cost the county government a total of $640.80. But officials stress that all the money went to local businesses in the county. That amount is higher than in 2014. The cost included a $200 cleanup fee from the Quail Branch Lodge in Lake Park. The remainder of the bill went to food for Jesse's Eats and Treats for just over $480. There was also a breakfast buffet, a fruit bowl, 
lunch, and other additional foods such as barbecue. A state senate bill is being considered by lawmakers that would allow counties to decide whether they want their local school superintendent to be elected by voters and school board members appointed by a grand jury. Sponsored by Senator John Wilkinson, this will allow a statewide law change. If this law does not get enacted, then the law will remain the same. The Senate also has voted to tighten Georgia's sex trafficking laws. Traffickers under the bill will be to register as sex offenders and would be required to pay into a state fund helping victims recuperate. The bill is sponsored by State Senator Renee Utterman, Unterman, who is a longtime victims advocate and would establish a new safe harbor for the Sexually Exploited Children's Fund. They, the fund would get money through new 2005 would get through new 2,500 red dollar fines on convicted traffickers and an annual $5,000 fee on adult entertainment establishments. The money would then pay the, for physical and mental health care, housing, education, job training, and child care. When we come back, we'll tell you about a family that fought hard to win the recent Lowndes County Spelling Bee. And find out why you should get your pneumonia shot now when News Vought Officer returns. So, I just moved in with this family, and it's embarrassing. The little one, he likes to go outside and crawl around in the giant litter box. I don't know what he's doing. I mean, I was born, and I knew how to use the litter box. Look at that. That's disgusting. Oh, poop already. You're making me nervous. Oh, okay, I can't look at this anymore. I really hope he grows out of this. For his sake. Welcome back to News Valdosta. In a repeat of last year, a Lowndes County brother and sister went head-to-head -head last week in the final round of the county's annual spelling bee. History was made Friday when the judges ran out of words in the Lowndes County School spelling bee. Siblings John and Joyce Liu were the last two students remaining in the contest, as, just as they were in the contest last year. The surprise came when the two children exhausted all 375 words, forcing the judges to select 20 words from the dictionary. After about three hours, Joyce was able to capitalize on her brother's mistake and take the title. Public health officials are encouraging all able-bodied Georgia residents to get their pneumococcal or pneumonia shots in addition to receiving the flu vaccine this year. The vaccine is used to prevent the pneumonia virus. Adults age 65 and older are encouraged to take two doses. Doctors say anyone ages 2 through 64 should take the vaccine to avoid this potential illness. The Varasta Early College Academy is having an open house for 5th grade parents later this week. VECA's open house is for the 5th grade parents who are interested in sending their children to Varasta Early College Academy for the 2015-2016 school year. The open house will begin at 6.30 Thursday evening in the school's The Teaching and Learning Training Center. A church in Valdosta is making an extra effort for the community by helping the homeless. Here's Teresa Bowles with more. So I'm standing outside of First Christian Church in Valdosta, right on North Patterson Street, where they believe in helping the community and the city of Valdosta in a variety of ways. First Christian Church of Valdosta has been on North Patterson Street since 1956, but has been called First Christian Church since 1840. Members of First Christian Church are provided with a family-like environment with vast diversity. <laughs> like the, the fellowship, the people, it's a wonderful, warm church, and if you don't come, they miss you. Seriously, they're not just joking around. The church has dedicated to helping the homeless and building shelters for Habitat for Humanity. It's a yearly thing that churches help to do. We contribute money, but mostly we contribute volunteers who go and um, work with other church people during the week to swing a hammer and help to build a house for people who have uh, qualified through Habitat to do that. Sunday school happens every Sunday at 9.30, and many members come from ages young well, to and so old. Jesus reached down and saved Peter. If you'd like to learn more about First Christian Church, you can visit www.fccvadosta.com. With News Vadosta, I'm Teresa Bowles. 
The Lowndes County Children Advocacy Center is trying to expand. Deborah Hughes of the CAC says the organization has six weeks to apply for grants and collect $375,000. If the CAC does not have the money in time, it will have to wait two years until it can apply for the grants again. The Advocacy Center believes the new center will benefit the community and is asking for donations. The Valdosta Rotary Club's Law Enforcement Appreciation Dinner is set for this week. The dinner honors law enforcement officers and raises funds to help local officers. This fund has helped many officers and their families. The fund helps officers in emergency situations as well as the families of officers that have died in the field. The dinner is set to start at 6 o'clock Thursday evening. Tickets are $100 for an individual and $1,000 for a table. Wiregrass Georgia Technical College's trucking program has been ranked 71st in the nation and among the top five in Georgia. Georgia, Illinois, Florida, and Pennsylvania contain the most truck driving schools in the nation. You can receive certification in heavy vehicle and truck technology and commercial trucks as well. Bus, dri bus driving at Wiregrass Georgia Technical College. We're going to take a short break, but when we come back, we'll take a look at our weather with Marcus Hill. So stay with us. In 1977, in Johannesburg, South Africa, an eight-year-old boy picked up the game of golf from his father. By the age of nine, he was already out playing him. The odds of this gentle lad winning the Junior World Golf Championships at the age of 14, one in 16 million. The odds of that same boy then making it to the US and European Pro Golf Tours one in seven million. The odds of the Big Easy winning the Open Championship once and the US Open Championship twice, one in 780 million. The odds of this professional golfer having a child diagnosed with autism, one in 110. Ernie Els encourages you to learn the signs of autism at autismspeaks.org. Early diagnosis can make a lifetime of difference. Welcome back to News Valdosta. Now let's take a look at the weather with Marcus Hill. Marcus, what's in store for us? Hello, Valdosta. Today's forecast is cloudy with a high of 52 degrees. Showers started in the morning and continued throughout the day. Your wind speed is 6 miles per hour with a humidity of 96%. Tonight's low will drop to 34 degrees. Those of you going outside, please wear a heavy coat in order to stay warm. Tomorrow's forecast is looking much better with sunny skies and a high of 56 degrees. It may be a little chilly, but at least it will not rain. The wind will be moving anywhere from 15 to 25 miles per hour, and the humidity will be at 43 percent. Tomorrow's, night, tomorrow's night's low is at a 25 degrees. The UV index is at a 2 out of 10 for today and a 6 out of 10 for tomorrow. Today's pollen count is extremely low, ranging anywhere from 0 to 2.4 out of 12. That's all for today's weather forecast. Back to you guys at the desk. When we come back, we'll take a look at local sports with Derek Hill, so stay right there.
of learning. I believe in service. I am full of passion. I embody sportsmanship. I trust in my resourcefulness. I like balance. That's why I chose. I chose. I chose. I chose. I chose. I chose Division Two. Welcome back. Now let's check in with Derek Hill for our local sports. Derek? Vodasta State has taken another win against Albany State in baseball action last week. Vodasta State had the game in the bag. Highlights from the game include home runs from VSU's Bryant Heyman and third baseman Michael Gouch. VSU ended the game with a 16-1 victory. The Blazers are off to a good start, so keep those homers coming. The Lady Blazers softball team blasted Albany State in a midweek sweep. The team racked up 15 runs with the help of Caitlin Calhoun. The Blazers got a doubleheader sweep over the Golden Rams. The senior season home run total was boosted to 68, which is 12 away from the NCAA Division II career home run record. The Blazers took a quick lead in the game with the home run and had a two-zip lead early in the contest. This sets Valdosta's record to 91 this year, leaving the Blazers number two at the number two spot. The, on this past weekend, Valwood had a couple of state champions crowned in wrestling. Valwood sophomore Miles Paramore and junior Gahan Byington won state championships in their weight classification. Paramore won in the 113-pound weight class, while Byington won in the 195 weight class. Valwood coaches say they're proud to have two state champions this year in wrestling. The Vadosta High girls basketball team lost the region championship in Moultrie last Friday. Tiff County led for much of the first half, leaving a three-point advantage. Asia Harrison's three-pointer on the opening possession gave Vadosta its first lead since the opening quarter. The first basket of the first of the fourth quarter by Laquisha Newkirk pushed Vadosta's lead to four with the five and a half minutes remaining. The game was eventually tied, but Tiff rebounded with 47 seconds left. Tiff County's Aubrey McElhaney missed the free throw to give Vadosta another possession. With nine and a half seconds left, Vadosta missed the shot for the win, and the Lady Cats finished second in the region. That concludes today's local sports. Back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Derek. When News Valdosta returns, we'll tell you about a national competition that's exciting local dancers. So don't go away. We'll be right back. Get your I am so stupid. You're not in here. Yes, I am. Every day, kids witness bullying. Why are you stabbing me with it? No, no. They want to help, Ow. but don't know how. Oh, you got Teach your kids how to be more than a bystander. Visit stopbullying.gov. kitchen surfaces, utensils, and hands with soapy water. One in six Americans will get sick from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. We're back with News Valdosta. A national dance competition is making its way to Valdosta this weekend. Watch out for the Fusion Regional Dance Competition being held in the Valdosta High School Performing Arts Center starting Friday. Fusion will host 11 regional competitions and finalists will attend national competitions in Panama City, Florida in July. This competition is open to the public, so if your child is interested in dance, it's not too late to enter. Visit the Fusion Dance website to view rules to register. February is Heart Health Month and Valdosta YMCA is raising awareness. The American Heart Association names heart disease as the number one cause of death in the United States killing nearly 600,000 people each year. More than half of these cases are preventable, and the YMCA is partnering with SGMC to offer three weeks in their 10-week annual Community Team Lean Weight Loss Challenge. Due to Black History Month, the Art Gallery at VSU is showing a collection of civil rights art pieces. Our reporter Melanie Jackson has more on this. From now until March 6th, 
Linda Van Beck will be hosting an art exhibition featuring the work of Carl Zerb and his civil rights collection. The paintings consist of brush drawings and collages from 1960 until 1963, along with some other selected artwork from the 1930s to 1960s. The art exhibition will take place in the Fine Arts Building located on BSU's campus. The gallery hours are Monday through Thursday from 8.30 a.m. until 5.30 p.m., along with Friday from 9 a.m. until 3 p.m. All of the artwork is, is on loan from the Lemoyne Center for the Visual Arts, which is located in Tallahassee, Florida. Some of the artwork utilizes the hot wax method, so you don't want to miss out. For more information, contact Julie Brown, the Gallery Director. And for News Valdosta, I'm Melanie Rose Jackson. That's it for our news program today. Thank you for watching News Valdosta. I'm Tramara Conyers. And I'm Chris Carter. We'll see you tomorrow.